said, how many is thankful that you're free this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Why don't you just take about 30 seconds and give him your best praise this morning. Amen. If you're thankful that you're free. for the presence of the Lord that I feel this morning. Amen. Amen. Why don't you get out of your seat, shake somebody's hand around you, just to let them know how glad that you are to see them this morning at Parkway. Good morning, Parkway. Come on, I'm glad to be in God's house today. Give the Lord praise. Why do y'all act like that? Because we got a bunch of people that have been set free and are excited about it. Vicki, if you'd be coming on, get ready, just wait over there. Ellie's coming to share an announcement with you. This is a special day for missions, too. I think we're doing a, are we doing the prayer from the, uh, as well, from the UPG. Pull out, you should have a bulletin insert if you want to pull that out. She's going to lead us in prayer and then make announcement uh, for some stuff going on with missions today. I've been sent with very specific instructions from Kathy of exactly what I'm supposed to say. I'm not quite the guilt tripper she is, but she's back there preparing for us. We all know that she's been known to use some questionable tactics to guilt people into stuff, but I figured since I'm the pastor's daughter, I better not do that. So we this morning are having our, it's usually annual, we've adapted a little bit since COVID, but we're glad that this year we're going to, as soon as service is over, we're going to open up these walls over here to the fellowship hall, set some extra tables out. We are still doing to-go box dinners, so you're, there's to-go boxes lined up in there that you'll be able to grab. The dinner is by donation only. Um, we are doing this for Ukraine, um, in the words of Kathy, what we need to keep in mind, which is true. Um, we are... I mean, we're spoiled. We all know that. Um, for the most part, we go to bed at night not worrying about if somebody's going to bomb our house. We, for the most part, don't have to worry about, you know, we've all got lunch prepared in there for us, but a lot of these Ukrainians don't. Um, so we, 
this, this was originally focused where we're going to send all of our money to Poland, but our pastor, Tomek, that we're connected with in Poland, they're doing a lot of Ukrainian relief right now, so that's where this money is going to be focused towards. So we encourage you. I mean, think about how blessed we are. We've got dinner in there. We've got homes to go home to. We've got a roof over our head, and a lot of these people don't have that. So we do encourage you to give, and then we are going to have our live dessert auction. I was telling Denny, and I know we've got a lot of new faces within the past couple of years that haven't been here for our live dessert auction, but it can get dangerous back there. If you put Chris Mills back there, and now Denny's threatening over the strawberry pie, you never know what you're going to come up with. So there will be a sign-up sheet back there. You'll grab a number, just like any other auction. Scott helps us auction these desserts off, and we just have a good time. So that one, of course, will go to the highest bidder, um, but we encourage you to come back there with us. It's going to be a good time. You can grab your to-go box, sit down, eat while we're having our auction. It's going to be a good time. And of course, we encourage you to give. Um, now, if you would reach for your insert here. We are praying um, today. Dad had to tell me how to say this before this morning for the Garung people. So again, like I say, I don't mean to make it sound like we're just a bunch of spoiled Americans, but a lot of times we are. Um, I know that our country is not perfect and we're seeing a lot of dark times, but these people, less than 1% of them are Christians. And there, there's a problem if that doesn't burden our hearts. So if you would, just close your eyes and join me in prayer for the Gurung people this morning of Nepal. Lord, we again, like I was just saying, God, we humble ourselves before you. And God, we ask for forgiveness that we are so caught up in our day to day. God, that we take so many things for granted. God, we're sitting in here, we're surrounded with a group of people who, who love Christ and who are encouraging and who are our brothers and sisters in Christ. And we cannot even begin to fathom a, a, a whole entire people group who is not reached by you, God, who has not been reached by your word. God, I saw in this insert that less than 1% of this people group is Christians. And God, if that doesn't burden our hearts, God, we ask for your forgiveness. And God, I pray that each day this week, Lord, that our people would be encouraged to follow along with this prayer, God. God, I thank you. I've seen even since 1997, they've gone from having only 23 Christians in this whole people group to now they have over 6,000 and we thank you for that growth, but we're believing for so much more. God, I know that we may never see firsthand what our prayers are doing and if our prayers reach them, but God, we're believing we're gonna meet people in heaven that have been touched by our prayers. God, we're gonna meet people of the Gurung of Nepal because of these prayers we're praying for them this week. God, we just pray for an increase in believers. God, I see that they're mostly Buddhist. And God, they're believing for a tithe in believers. That would be about um, 6,200 more believers of the six of the 630,000 people who are there. And God, we just pray, Lord, that you would, for their missionary agencies, God, that there would be an increase in missionaries and preachers. God, that they can be trained as pastors and evangelists. God, I pray, Lord, that they would be catalysts of your word. God, that people would rise up. Lord, that they would have a boldness. I pray, Lord, for an increase in Bibles in their language. God, for whole Bibles, the whole Word of God, Lord, that you would make that accessible to them in their language and a language that they can understand. God, we're praying that, like I said, less than 1% of them are saved. God, we're believing for 10% of them to be saved and that it would continue to grow and grow. It may be something that we never see on the news or that we never hear about, but God, we're asking and we're pleading with you, God, even right now as we pray, God, that you would visit them in dreams and visions. God, I I know we have Bibles. We can access a Bible anywhere, but they can't. But God, you are capable of reaching them in so many ways. God, we pray even now, Lord, that they would feel a tug at their heart. God, that the Christians that are already there would be strengthened right now as we're praying for them, that they would know, Lord, that there are people on the other side of the world who are crying out to you and asking God for an increase. God, I pray that they would come to know your presence like never before. God, that a revival would break out among this people group and they would say, look, what we've been missing. God, you are so good that they would come to know the true and tangible presence of the Lord that we are so blessed to experience here. God, we pray that this same spirit we felt in this house this morning would be amongst them right now. Lord, we thank you for what you're going to do. I pray that you would bless our day today. God, bless our baptism. Bless our mission Sunday. God, we give you the glory for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Somebody raised that girl right. It was her mother. The Bible says in Matthew 3, 
beginning at verse 13. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me. And Jesus answering said unto him, Allow it to be so now. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. In Matthew 28, verse 18, Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name. See, it's not, it's not just an American thing. It's not just a Western civilization thing. He said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. And when we baptize people, being baptized does not save you. It is something Jesus commanded us to do, and it is the outward sign of an inward work. It's an outward symbol that there's been a transformation on the inside. Amen? Vicki, would you come? Vicki has been coming to our church the last few months, and God's been working in her heart. Her mother told me, I can see a change in her. And that's the gospel. And Vicki wanted to be baptized. Vicki, have you accepted Jesus Christ into your heart as your personal Lord and Savior? You've asked Jesus into your heart? Okay. Right. Give me that hand over there. And take that handkerchief and put it over your nose and mouth. Would you scoot up on the edge there just a little bit? Upon Vicky's profession of faith in Jesus Christ as her personal Lord and Savior, we baptize this, our sister, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Give Vicki a hand, let her know we love her today. All right, you may be seated. Our ushers are coming at this time for your tithe and offering. Every good and perfect gift comes from Him. And we give back in worship to Him. Lord, we thank You for Your presence in this room. God, we want people to recognize that it's not certainly about any kind of performance on our part, Lord, it's when your presence comes into the room. 
that makes all the difference. It is that factor that we can't explain and we can't quite put into words. But we know it's real and we know when you're there. And we thank you for being with us today. God, as we see the testimony of changed lives, we thank you for that. We pray that you'd touch hearts today as we give of our tithe and offering. We pray that you'd take it and multiply it for the work of your kingdom. And we give you the honor and the glory and we give in worship today. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you as you give. Come to worship the Lord this morning. Amen, amen. God is definitely in the house today. Amen. Everybody stand to your feet. Amen. Let's worship the Lord together this morning.
words fall short I got nothing new How could I express All my gratitude I could sing these songs As I often do But every song must end And you never do So I throw up my hands And praise you again and again Cause all that I have is a hallelujah Hallelujah Not no, it's not much But I'm nothing else fit for a king Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. I've got one response. I've got just one move. With my arms stretched wide. You've got a lion inside of those lungs Get up and praise the Lord Come on my soul Oh don't you get me Lift up your song Cause you've got a lion
throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I'm nothing else fit for a king. Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we give you our best praise today.
share with him something that when Jan was here, we were eating together, and God revealed some things as I was talking to her. And there was some battles and some things that I had fought, had fought for many, many, many years. About two years ago, I made a statement to my husband, and, and I had been praying about something, and I said, I'm not going to say any more negative about this situation. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to speak anything negative. And I was talking to Sister Jan, and I said, you know, since that time, I'm the, nothing's changed really, but I quit speaking doubt, and I quit speaking death, and my whole, I'm completely, that stronghold is gone off my life. I no longer struggle with that. That's not anything I struggle with. God completely, 100%, me from that so I know what it is to have a stronghold and it was a big stronghold because it had been there for 27 28 years over my life but I made a conscious decision I'm not speaking it I'm not saying it anymore no matter if I feel it I'm not gonna say it and when I made that decision and I quit speaking death then God brought it broke that stronghold off my life does anybody else know what it's like to have a stronghold of addiction, a stronghold of negativity, a stronghold of depression, a stronghold of doubt, a stronghold of your health. Who knows what it's like? Who, I know there's a house full of them in this place. I can look at you and see. Yes, I'm so grateful. Touch the Lord as He goes by. You will find He's not too busy to answer your cry. He is passing by this moment. All your needs He will supply. Just reach out and touch the Lord as He goes by. You'll find He's not too busy to answer your cry. He is passing by this moment. All your
watch the Lord as He goes by. You will find He's not too busy to answer your cry. He is passing by this moment all your needs He will supply. about him touch him with your brains bless the name of the Lord he's got everything you need he's passing by this moment give him praise hallelujah hallelujah glory to God Remain standing with me. You can be turning in your Bibles to the book of Judges, chapter 16. While you're turning there, I couldn't help reflecting and touching my heart and just thanking the Lord for it. April, just wave your hand so they know who I'm talking about. April has been connected to us for a long time. All the way back to our first church up in Harlan. And Jennifer and I have prayed a lot of prayers for her. Not as many as her mom and dad have prayed. And April just watching you and then Clay came up. Stand up here and worship the Lord. Bless my soul this morning. Over the years, there have been some ups and downs. But you stand here this morning worshiping God as a testimony to the grace of God. Parents, keep praying. I said keep praying. Don't give up. Sometimes years may go by. Sometimes it may look like they're getting worse instead of getting better. But God is a prayer answering God. And your prayers will sustain them and keep them. Amen. When they're not even praying for themselves, your prayers will keep them and see them through. Amen. Why don't you give the Lord thanks this morning. Praise God. I want you to look with me in Judges 16. I wrestled some with this message today not because it's not a a good and encouraging word, it is I just wanted to be sure that what I said is what God is saying sometimes any of us can be guilty of saying what we want to hear and if I just say what I want to hear it won't amount to anything but if I say what God is saying that matters I just want to read one verse Judges 16 and 22 most of us are familiar with the story of Samson who was known for his strength supernatural strength but he played around with his calling and as a result of that there came a time when he played around with it too much too long and the enemy caught him and cut off his hair which was the symbol of his covenant relationship with God and of his strength the enemy cut his hair off and they imprisoned him 
put out his eyes and blinded him, reduced him really to an existence, nothing more than an animal grinding out the grain. But the Bible says in Judges 16, 22, however, the hair of his head began to grow again after it had been shaved. That felt so good, I want to read it again. However, the hair of his head began to grow again after it had been shaved. I want to preach the next few minutes if the Lord will help me when things begin to grow again. When things begin to grow again. You may have never thought, you may have thought they never would, but when things begin to grow again. God touch us today. We could leave right now. I know we've been in the house of the Lord and in your presence. God, I pray that you touch hearts. I pray for everyone that's discouraged. I pray for that one that's here today that maybe is far from you. God, I pray to the God who brings life change. Nobody else can do that, Lord. Not a government program not the good intentions and efforts of others. You're the only one who changes lives. And God, I pray for that today, for that life-changing anointing. Lord, I pray that you'd speak in such a way that people would even wonder, Lord, who's been talking to that preacher? Not because it's me or I knew anything, but because of you, Lord, and because you know. And I pray that you'd speak in that way and make yourself real to people today. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless, bless somebody as you're being seated this morning. <clears throat> when things begin to grow again, This text, this scripture is as good a witness and testimony as any in all the Word of God. That God is a God of restoration. God is a God of recovery. God is the God of a second chance. That even when you've blown it and it was your fault, could have done better, should have done better, was blaming everybody else for it until you realized there was no point. That God doesn't give up on us. This scripture is the witness that no matter how long, dark, and hopeless the night, no matter how bad things look, God will make things grow again. When others had given up on you and you'd given up on yourself, God will come and make things grow again. In fact, I think we need that testimony after the last two or three years. That even when everything was shut down and we were all hiding in our homes, wondered if things would ever get back to any kind of normal again. A lot of despair a lot of depression, a lot of hopelessness, but it doesn't last forever. Weeping endures for the night, but joy comes in the morning. And that there comes a time through God when there's 
there's hope and when things begin to grow again. When God begins to bless again. The Song of Solomon in chapter 2 described it this way. He said, he was talking about springtime, and he said, the time for the singing of the birds has come. There may have been a moment when it was winter, but the time for the singing of the birds has come. Job expressed it this way, and you know all that Job went through. Job said, even when a tree has been chopped down and all that's left is a stump and you don't think it could ever grow again, he said, at the slightest hint of water, that tree will begin to sprout forth and spring forth and it will live again. And I want to remind somebody this morning of a principle. Don't make permanent decisions based on temporary circumstances. Don't make permanent decisions based on temporary circumstances. Just because things look bad right now, don't give up hope. The trees may look dead in the winter, but that doesn't mean you need to chop them down. They will live again. Things will grow again. Let me share a quick video with you to help us get a mental picture of that. Roll, roll my video if you would. I don't know about you, but there is hope in that for me. A plant can seem so tender. The seed can be buried over, but it'll push its way up. I don't know about you, but I've seen some plants and some trees grow out of solid rock. And I wonder how in the world they could possibly grow. I'm telling you, God can do it for a marriage. God can do it for a life. God can do it for a child who has gotten away a long way from him. God can do it for your hopes and dreams. There come moments that God promises us. It may look completely hopeless. Samson had lost his eyesight. He had lost everything. He was like an animal just walking around in circles, grinding out the grain. But the Bible said his hair began to grow again. And I came to tell somebody today that no matter how hopeless it looks and no matter how buried you feel, God will cause things to grow again. And in some ways, in many ways, really, Samson's a picture of the church that we've played around with our calling and we've played around with our relationship with God. God intended us for strength. I said God intended us for strength. God did not mean for us to be weak and anemic and just barely get by. We were destined for strength because the Spirit of the Lord is upon us. When the Spirit of the Lord is upon you, it makes all the difference in the world. But when we've played around with that and we've lost our relationship and we've forfeited our calling, God says even in the midst of that, when you'll begin to turn your heart back toward me, he said things will grow again. And Samson stands between the pillars 
And he'd lost a lot, but he prayed, God, touch me one more time. And I want to tell you, the church has played around for a long time, but I really believe that God is looking for a people that even though we have played around and messed around, that coming out of COVID, that the church would rise up and say, God, we know we may have messed up, but Lord, we're believing you for things to grow again, that the calling's still there and the anointing's still there and we're destined for more than where we've been. Because in this with Samson, you see at least a couple of things. You see purification. God will use that long, dark night to purify our souls and to draw us back to him. And he did it for Samson. He'll use that long, dark night to purify us. There were some things we were dependent on that didn't really matter. We've got to turn our eyes back to him. It was about purifying and it was also about God's purpose because even though his head had been shaved and things looked hopeless, God wasn't done yet. God still had a purpose. And I want to remind you today, we pray, God, let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And even when God's own people have failed him and he destined us to be mighty warriors and he destined us to be more than conquerors and more than overcomers, and we failed in a lot of that, but I came to tell you that God still has a purpose and God's not done yet. And before I leave the introduction, can I tell you one more thing? Parkway Ministries, we've been through some things. We, we've been here a hundred years. There have been some ups and downs. But can I tell you this morning, I really believe for us, it's time for, it's time for us to grow again. I said I believe it's time for us to grow again. This summer I'll be your pastor 10 years. Sometimes it takes time in God's process. The first seven years, we were just getting on our feet from some things we'd been through. We were just getting on our feet again those first seven years. Then COVID hit, and the whole body of Christ has been dealing with that the last two or three years. But I want to stand and tell you today, not just numerically, but spiritually and as individuals and in every way, I want to tell you it's time for us to grow again. Look over at somebody and tell them, it's time for you to grow again. You sat around, made excuses, and had a pity party long enough. It's time to get up out of that mess and shake off wherever you've been and what others have said about you and believe that God causes things to grow again. <clears throat> In all kinds of ways. Are you with me? Now let me give you th three principles here when that we need to know when things begin to grow again. Number one, good and evil will grow together in the last days. Good and evil will grow together in the last days. I'm not, I'm not prophesying some pie in the sky. We think, you know, I just wish all the battles would go away. I just wish God had blessed me and I wouldn't have any more problems. I, I got news for you. As long as you live in this life, you're going to have problems. Until you get to heaven, it's, it's part of the human condition. There's never going to be a time when everything's perfect. And Jesus told us, give me my scripture if you would, Matthew 13, Jesus told a parable. And when you read this in its context, he was specifically addressing the last days, the end times. That's what this parable was about. When you read it. And he said, he said you, ha you had a field. And he said the enemy came and sowed seeds in your field. And so you got to a point where the weeds and the wheat were growing. And he said you wanted to go and jerk up the weeds, but if you did, you'd hurt the wheat. So this is what he said. And I've had to learn that. Matthew 13 and 30. He said, let both the weeds and the wheat grow together until the harvest. And at the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather together the weeds 
and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Now he said at the end, are y'all hearing me? He said at the end, I'm gonna send my angels and they're gonna, there's gonna be two gatherings. He said there's gonna be two gatherings. He said one gathering will be for the barn and the other gathering will be for the fire of judgment. And I want to be sure I'm gathered. I'm among those who are gathered into the barn and not into the fire. But he said until that happens at the end of time, you can expect the weeds and the wheat are going to grow together. Now hear what I'm saying. I believe that in these last days that we're going to see a remnant church, not the entire church, because there's a liberal backslidden church that is apostate. Hello. But there's a remnant church that's going to grow and step into what we've been praying for all along and be the church that God called us to be. And the wheat's going to grow. But don't think everybody's just going to be it's just going to be a, a tiptoe through the tulips and everybody's going to be happy about it. Because he said while the good's growing, the evil's going to grow. Aren't we seeing that? We're going to see them grow up together. He said in the last days there will be an intensification and there will be an expansion on both counts of both the good and the evil. They will grow up together. We're seeing evil grow in ways that we never could have imagined when I was a kid. We're seeing evil expand and intensify, but at the same time that's happening, there is a remnant who believes that even after we've been shaved, the hair can grow again and the anointing can come. Samson stood between those pillars and prayed for God to touch him one more time. There are some pillars that need to be pushed over. They will only, that will only be done in the power of the Holy Spirit. And he brought that pagan temple down and more of the enemy died then than had in all of his life. His greatest anointing was, was reserved for his finest hour. Come on, somebody hear me. We may see the proliferation of evil. It's gonna get worse and worse. We can't look to the government as our source, but there's a God who's still on the throne who is ready to empower and anoint his people. It's going to get worse in our schools. I can't imagine that. Most of us can't, but it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse in the public arena. It's okay to be anything but a Christian. Listen, the world that we knew going into COVID and the world that we live in now coming out of COVID is not the same world. We have come out into a world that is far more under the sway of the spirit of the Antichrist. Good, in the, good and evil will grow together in the last days. Look for that, expect that. That's what Jesus said was going to happen. It's going to intensify and expand on both counts. <clears throat> Number one, good and evil will grow together in the last days. Number two, God is the one who makes things grow. God is the one who makes things grow. You know, man is so ar arrogant, so full of himself, and we are really impressed with our technology. We are just really impressed with ourselves and what we've done. But I'm going to tell you something. God is the only one who makes things grow. Whatever it is, I don't care if it's a little seed in the dirt. I don't care if it's a person. Come on. We're not here I do believe God wants us to grow again 
And I'm not just talking about numerically. I'm talking about spiritually, numerically, and in all kinds of ways. But God is the one who makes things grow. It's not because we came, it's not because we had that much ingenuity. It's not because we came up with anything. Because ultimately our purpose is not just to grow in the number of backsides we got sitting on seats on a given Sunday morning. Our ultimate goal is not just to have a bigger number of rear ends and seats. Our goal is to grow people. I said our goal is to grow people. I said our goal is to grow people. We are in the people growing business. We're not just here about the size of an organization that impresses somebody. We're here to grow people. And if people aren't growing, it doesn't matter how many butts we got in the seats. So why don't you get up and do something about it? Grow. God is the one that makes things grow. It's not because I figured out how to do anything. There's a, in fact, there's a mystery to it. Jesus told a parable in another place. He said a farmer goes out and he plants seed and he said this is the nature of the kingdom this is what the kingdom's like he said a farmer goes and plants seed he, he cultivates it, he waters it he goes to bed, he gets up the next morning he works through the day, he goes to bed he sleeps, he gets up the next morning over time it grows he doesn't know how there's a mystery to it cause he's not the one making it happen it's God who's the one making it happen if anything's happening And I came to tell somebody this morning, you may feel like your marriage is stagnant and dead, but God makes things grow. You may feel like you are stagnant and dead, but God makes things grow. You may be dealing with situations that look completely impossible and are buried over, but God can make things grow again. Just ask Samson. Look at my scripture, my second scripture here. The Apostle Paul had this to say. 1 Corinthians 3 and 7. So then neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. I don't know how to make a church grow. And I've been pastoring a number of years now. I didn't come with a plan because I knew how to make things happen. I don't even, in a lot of ways, know how to make you grow. I know some things that can contribute to it. Again, we're, we're about growing people. We're not just trying to grow a big church. The Bible said God is the one who builds the church. I can't make it happen. God's the one. God builds the church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. But I do want to see people grow. Can I talk to somebody for a minute? You may claim you've been serving God 25 years. Thank God. But if you're fighting the exact same battles that you were fighting 25 years ago, there's a problem. Now there are going to be battles no matter what level you're on. And there are different battles that go with different levels. And I have battles that I fight today, but I don't fight the exact same battles that I fought 20 years ago because God helped me to grow. Come on! God helped me to get past some things. To get up and move on. Everybody smile. So if you're fighting the same suckers that you've been fighting for the last 20 years, you may need to examine yourself. God, I need to grow.
Now, God's the one who makes things grow. I, I love this part of the story. God, when God gets ready to make things grow, brother, he's, he's going to do it when he makes up his mind to do it. Amen? I love this part of the story. They get Samson. They, they cut off his hair. They shave his head. He loses his strength. The Bible, they put him in prison, gouged out his eyes. The Bible said his hair started growing again. Lord, I could pitch this mic and run around all the way around this building. I said his hair began to grow again. I'm going to take my time while I'm here. Is that all right? I'm trying to pray that same anointing on me. Asher, I envy you, buddy. I wish I had that. Have you seen this kid's hair? Stand up, Asher. Look at that head. That is anointed right there. I wish I could do that. Sit down. I, 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 it's a running joke. Somebody asked me, well, what if it turned gray? I don't care what color. I don't care if it turns gray, if it just wouldn't turn loose. They shave his head. Now, if I had been, maybe everybody doesn't think like I do. If I had been the Philistines, I guarantee I would have sent a barber to his cell at least once a week. And maybe about every other day. To make sure that his hair didn't grow again. But apparently... The Philistines didn't do that. I mean, you all, the Bible doesn't say exactly, but you almost get this picture. He gets bushy headed again. I just sent a barber in there at, one, at least once a week, if not more. They didn't do that. Why? There's only one reason that I can come up with, and it is this. Apparently, they were convinced. It was all over for Samson. I told you I'm about to run. Apparently, they were convinced. They shaved his head, and apparently they thought there was no hope. There was no chance of God ever using him again, of God ever touching him again. There was no hope of recovery. There was no hope of restoration. So they didn't send a barber. But guess what? Whoa! His hair started growing again. Because God is a God of restoration. God is a God who makes things grow again. When the world wrote you off, when your family said there was no hope, when everybody around you told you it was all over and done with, guess what, baby? Your hair can grow again. I don't care how many times you failed. One of the things that I've observed over the years working with people in addiction is that they don't all get it the first time. In fact, a whole lot of them don't get it the first time. And you can look down on them if you want to, but most of us have had a lot of things we didn't get the first time. And so a few years will go by and we'll see them come through treatment again. We'll see them circle through treatment again. Just like Samson. 
going around in circles, grinding out the grain. <coughs> now listen, there's hope, but that doesn't mean there's not a price for playing around with sin. So I'm going to tell you something. Samson got his relationship with God back. He got his sight back. But he didn't get everything back. He got his strength back. Got his anointing back. But he didn't get his eyesight back. He didn't get his freedom back. Hello. I'm just saying there's a price for sin. And there were some things he didn't get back. But his hair began to grow again. Because it's the relationship with God that matters more than anything else. I mean, I might lose some things, but I can't afford to lose out with God. And even when you're coming through for the third, the fourth, the fifth time, we serve a God even when everybody else has given up and said there's no hope. You see hair start growing again. Whoa! You see hair start growing again. I love that. Because God makes things grow. I'm trying to decide if I want to go to point three or not. Good and evil will grow together in the last days, and we, we better be prepared for that. I'm believing God to pour out His Spirit, but evil's going to get worse. Good and evil will grow together. God makes things grow. And here's my third point. I've got a prophetic word for some of you. Grow out of it. Grow out of it. Now let me, let me unpack that a little. <clears throat> we want, we always want immediate, we want immediate deliverance. God wants to deliver you. Some, but sometimes he doesn't just want to get you out of it. He wants to grow you out of it. We don't like that. Give me my last passage here from Acts. Look, look, look at this. Look at this last passage from Acts 14. It says, and in Lystra, are y'all still with me? And in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from birth, from his mother's womb. Now catch that because that's important. Who had never walked. Some of us say, well, I've always been this way. I, I, it, I can never change. I've always, I've always been this way. This man, I was born this way. This man heard Paul speaking. Paul observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed said with a loud voice, stand up straight on your feet. And he leaped and walked. He didn't just gracefully come up. Bible said he came up with a jump. I would too. Here's the point. If he had been this way from birth, and now the, the scripture seems to let us know now he's an adult. Okay? So for all those years, he couldn't walk. But apparently, he kept growing. Because now he's an adult. We sit around and make excuses. Well, I can't walk, so therefore I can't do nothing. What you need to do, see, there may be, there may, there, there'll come a point when God's ready to deliver you, 
But until that time comes, keep growing. In all the other places that you can keep growing, keep growing. And then when God's time comes and you're ready, you'll come bounding to your feet with strength you've never had before. But quit making excuses and feeling sorry for yourself and keep growing until you get there. Does that make sense? I deal with people all the time that act like because they're crippled, they can't grow in any other area of their life. You may have some places that's going to take a miracle, and you believe God to do that in His time when you're ready, but until then, keep growing. Keep growing in all the other places. I'm making my wife nervous on the edge here. Until then, keep growing. I thought about you. You don't mind being an example, do you? (coughs) Listen, I was so, it blessed me. The other day we did, we served at a big recovery rally. We cleaned up. I happened. I just happened to get in there when Chris was speaking, and there was several hundred people in there, addicts and all kind of people. And he wasn't, baby. He wasn't just sharing. He may not think he's a preacher, but he was up there preaching the gospel to these people. I was so proud of him. Now, Chris. He's got that arm that he struggles with and has prayed for years and still praying for God to heal him. Amen. I don't know if you could hear him on the front row. It's done. It's already done. A few years ago, we had to do some work in here. We had scaffolding up. And I, I mean, we were almost up in the ceiling. Me and Chris on scaffolding up in that ceiling When it dawned on me, my God, I am up on this scaffolding with a one-armed man. And trust him as much as anybody I know. And uh, if you've never traveled with him, it's a real adventure. He'll drive that church van, drink a cup of coffee, hit the turning signal, all with one arm. Text, talk on the phone, go down the road. It's, it's, It's a great experience. Now, he could have, can we just get real for a minute? Now, I I know there are cases where people legitimately receive some assistance. Okay, I understand I'm not putting that down. But he could have drawn a check for that arm and sat around. But you know what he did? He went back to school. He got a degree. He works to help other people. He owns his own recovery house now. Now that doesn't mean we're not still praying and believing for God to heal that arm. I tell Jennifer on the Sunday that happens, come look for me down down I-75 somewhere because I'm going to be shouting running the north or south, one direction or the other, you're going to find me down somewhere shouting the glory because God done healed Chris's arm. We're praying, believing, for, but until that happens, he kept growing. Do we believe for a miracle? Sure we do. But until it happens, that's not an excuse to quit growing. We've all got places we're crippled. We've all got places that we find ourselves at a deficiency and a lack. But that doesn't mean it's okay to just sit there and feel sorry for yourself. (coughs) So keep growing. The promise is... his hair began to grow again. 
his hair began to grow again. Now, I don't know exactly how that may apply in your life and situation. But I know this. You can believe God even if I failed, even if I was part of the problem. God is merciful. I believe he can make it grow again. I believe he can cause things to grow again. No matter how dark, no matter how hopeless it seems, no matter any of that, it is the promise. God causes things to grow again. God causes things to grow again. No matter what we've been through, no matter how bad it looked, God causes things to grow again. God, touch me one more time. Touch me one more time, Lord. Touch me one more. Let your spirit fall on me one more time. Stand with me all over this room. Just, just lift your hands and worship the Lord for a minute. And we'll get to the carry out dinner and the auction, dessert auction stuff here in a little bit. Let's worship the Lord for a minute right where you stand. I, I really feel this right now in my spirit. I feel like there are some people in this room, maybe several. You know the spot in your life and in your journey. You say, Pastor, I need to come and believe God that if He'll touch me one more time, that this thing can grow again. My hair can grow again, so to speak. Now, what that place is in one person's life may be different from another person's life. But whatever it is, I've got to believe God. It can look however He wants it to look. But I'm going to come to this altar and I'm going to surrender. I'm not going to make excuses and I'm going to believe God that he can touch me that this thing can grow back by the supernatural touch of the Holy Spirit on my life God in Jesus name if you're here and that bears witness with you I want you to start getting out of your seat come on there's some I could point out there's some I could point out come stand in this altar lift both hands and begin to start talking to the Lord. Come on. Ministry, future, direction, provision, whatever it is. I believe in God. Come on, this altar's open. Come on. It can grow again. to grow again they're going to begin to sing I want altar workers to come and start laying hands on up and down this altar come on begin to press into God begin to cry out to God walk by faith and not by sight and believe him it can grow again come on as we lay hands on all up and down this altar this morning in Jesus name in Jesus name Others may have thought you were hopeless. Walking around these walls, I thought by now they'd 
before But you have never found me Waiting for change to come Knowing the battle's won For you have never found me yet Your promise still